Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Um, email Jake Lewis needed help on his serve. I'm going to show you what he sent me on a video, but today I'm going to try to straighten out your serve and maybe do a couple serve drills uh, that'll help you uh, because serve is one of the hardest strokes in tennis because nobody practices it. So here's some drills for you. I have Coach um, Coach Andrew to help me with this one. I'm going to show him Jake's uh, video and then have him try to straighten it out a bit. All right, hold Andrew tight here. Assistant Coach of USF with me today. Uh, we're going to teach Jake how to serve a little more properly here. So I'm going to show him. This is the first time he's seen the video. So he's a lefty, right? So, so he's got like a frying pan. He's holding yeah. the thing like a frying pan. We got to pronate that a little bit more into the backhand, yeah. like a backhand grip. Um, he's also he, he like brings, taking he a brings step. his left. He brings his left over really quick, right? So he doesn't get a full pronation. As you can tell, when you want to hit your first serve, right, you want to maximize all its power, all of its, all of its complexity on it right so to get that full activation he needs to load his hip the reason why he's not getting a full hit on it is because his left foot already comes while he's tossing so with that contact when you, when you move your left hip right away you're actually releasing all that contact before you even serve so there's no power on the racket right, right. but this is because of the, the grip, grip, the grip too as well the grip. Yeah. yeah so that also is the grip one is the grip it should be a continental or the hammer grip. Or, and two, he has to make sure that his left foot, because he's, since he's a lefty, I'm a righty, but if he's a lefty, he should try to keep his right hip out. When he serves, the reason why you keep most of the greatest players, like Pete Sampras, all the best servers, Andy Roddick, have such a great serve, is because they keep that right hip or left hip loaded in front, so when they have to go for it, there's basically still creating all that power and energy when that ball is made that contact. Right. Plus, plus I wanted to show uh, Coach Andrew one more thing. Yeah. Like, watch the footwork on this. Like, he takes, he, look, he's loading back way back here, yeah. and then he steps up, and then he comes around, right? Yeah. we got to keep keep that foot still. we got to so, keep yeah. those foot still. So that right, that right foot that he's, he's already moving before even he tosses, so balance already off his balance right his balance is already off balance so basically he's, he's hitting and moving at the same time he's trying well, to he's, he's actually back here he's actually like this yeah he's back here he's actually line, back yeah. here like and they this. take a step and they and they take step stepping in and then coming like this so yeah. we got it's planted before you serve that's right. the biggest key exactly don't keep that back here have the idea of like where you're going to hit the serve stay keep your right foot as still as possible during the serve right so making sure that he loads comes through and then when he finishes, he brings his left hip over while he's making contact. Right. Not before. So Andrew's going to teach us a few of those. He's right-handed, obviously. So, Jake, I'm sorry. <laughs> so this is for... So you got to do it vice versa. <laughs> so the biggest thing, right, as a server, right, you want to have a solid base. You don't want to move your legs as much. But before, just before you start serving, you have to make sure your left leg, or in Jake's case, the right leg has to stay still. Therefore, when you're starting your serve, I don't move my right leg. I keep this right leg as still as possible until I take it back and I finish through my serve. Therefore, I'm not moving. I don't move my hip. I still load. Even, in, even after my toss, I'm still loading right here. So the last minute, I'm exploding, exploding. And then I'm rotating my whole body so I can convert all that power and that control to the target I want to hit. Therefore, I'm trying to go T. I'm going to convert all my weight and my hip rotation to that T spot. Therefore, so there's some drills you can do. For the movement part, I would just say when you start your serve, just constantly remind yourself to not move your left. Or if you're a lefty, don't move your right leg. All I always say is you always want to start off with one, changing that grip from frying pan grip to a continental. Remember, it's like that backhand grip. Just grab, try to, like think about you're trying to bang a nail on a, on a piece of wood, right? So this is your continental grip. And making sure it was simplified, your take back is fine. A 
love that simple take back where you load, take your time here, and then before you explode, you speed up as fast as you can. So the first thing I want you to remember is keeping that left foot out. So the simple drill for this one, don't move your left leg, just hit like a warm up serve. And just let your right hip come over. If you're a lefty, let that lift, that left hip come over as well. So therefore, you're serving, do a couple of these. So you make sure that your front foot is always planted. One more time. Right? So therefore, it forces you to hold your balance and make you feel that your contact and your hip are going together. Therefore, the second one we're going to work on is making sure you're leaving your right, your, your foot behind you connected to your hip or to your body. So when you serve, you see the greatest serves, like Pete Sampras, Roger Federer, the greatest serves, I believe, on tour right now, these guys are keeping this left foot your behind leg as close to the front foot as possible. And you notice that my hip is out. My hip is straight out. The reason why my hip is straight out is therefore I'm already engaging my hip. My whole body's turned before the serve. And I'm getting all the transferring all my weight to go up to chase that ball up. Therefore, you see the serve. I'm converting all that power and energy straight up to that ball. I'm making contact. Right on where the spot is where I'm, where I'm turning, and I'm snapping all the way through. So simple drills like that, just making sure that you want, one, to keep your left foot or your front foot still. Keep it still. You can place it as where as you like. I like to place it just sometimes a little bit, like an inch or two behind the line. Afterwards, I always make sure that when I'm about to serve, I'm always going to keep my, my leg behind me. Close to my, to my front leg and make sure my hip is always out. And therefore, that should solve most of your serving issues. One of the drills that I always used to tell my students if they are having problems with moving their front foot is making sure that they get to a spot where they're most comfortable at. So leaving their left their front foot as close to the line or just as far enough that if you know you're just going to move because I twitch a lot, I love to twitch, I don't know why but if I have enough playing room, if I do twitch a little bit I'll still, I will not fall asleep but I always constantly remind myself to keep the left foot out or your front foot out so if you're lefty or righty, just make sure that front foot just stays there if it moves an inch, that's when you know you're starting to trust it back again so therefore I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to toss the ball right in front of me. About maybe, if you think about a clock, 12 to 1. So around that area, I'll be tossing in front of me. And make sure that the toss is a little high. And you make contact. Therefore, if you're going to serve, right, make sure you're loading. You're just going to take this back to your, your position where you're just going to hit it. Afterwards, you're going straight up. And you're trying to keep that left foot still. But you're bringing your right hip, hip over after you finish. This is what the drill is going to look like. Pop down in front and keep it going forward. The reason why is so when you go over like this, your tendency is not to move that left leg and it'll keep you still. And therefore, that will solve that hip problem that you're stepping out on. Make sure that hip, right, if you're taking that back foot to step in, it's going to go straight to where your spot will be, right to your front of your foot. So it'll keep you balanced. That's one of the drills I would recommend Jake to do, and that should help out his problem of not moving his left foot, but also helping him bring together his leg, and afterwards working that hip rotation to go all the way. For that, for one of the other drills that he just played with, um, that Harry and I saw was his grip was a little, what we call a frying pan technique. We don't get enough power on it. That ball flies everywhere. We don't, we don't know where that ball ends up usually, right? So therefore, we're gonna start off with the continental grip, right, the snap. So when you serve, right, it's like throwing a ball. 
But if you ever threw a, a soft, like through a football or just a regular baseball, right? It's the same thing as how we're going to serve. Therefore, when we're throwing, we're really relaxed on the wrist. My wrist is super relaxed. Like, even if I do this, think about a pendulum, right? The serve is like a pendulum. It's like we take our serve back slowly, and then afterwards, keeping that confidence out, my snap naturally comes over like that. Therefore, if we're trying to practice our serves, the one drill I would always do is try to keep this continental just like that. Keep the wrist relaxed as, as much as possible. You're just going to toss it up. Sorry. Toss up. And let that wrist come through. Or keep it really simple. Take it back like you're throwing a football. Or I usually call this, I'm just showering, I'm just going to put shampoo on my head. You start off like this, keep it continental, and all your you toss front, and you can go forward. The reason why is this drill is so useful, it will test you if you're actually letting your wrist come through the ball and stay naturally relaxed. So you get that full coordination, and you will feel the ball should feel easier when you make contact when you're doing it right. It, it shouldn't feel forced, right? If it's forced, if it's the prime pack technique, it's really hard to so see. I'm actually going to wrist it and be really tense to go the other way. But if I go continental, leave it out like this. Make sure this racket is just on top of your head. Kind of like you're trying to doing like kind of like a kick serve with your head almost. Leave it out here, tossing out in front, and you're letting it come through naturally. Therefore, you get that full rotation and that natural snap to go around your body. So, to re-explain what the continental grip is, so just think about it this way. I make a Nike check mark with my fingers, even though I'm not supposed to my Nike. I'm sure they were. Make sure that hand, that Nike check where you see that middle crevice is this right here, right? You see where that middle crevice is? That makes that kind of like U point. You want to make sure that is on the flat part of this grip, right? So when I make sure this is going to be a straight continental, it's kind of like you're hitting your volley too. So every it's going to be like this continental grip, making sure that this Nike checkpoint where that U create creates, you're going for that middle part of that grip right here. So most rackets you'll see, they actually have a middle point, it's a flat point, right in the middle. That is where that middle of your crevice, that, that checking, Nike check mark is, will be right there. So therefore, when you're hitting the serve, right, when you back up, what I like to see when um, Jack was doing it, he was taking this time with his backswing, which is great, but he, he needs to work on his patience with loading. This has to be slow and then explode as fast as you can. That's the next thing. So the pronation of having that pendulum, right? If you see a pendulum, right? When it starts to build momentum, it goes slow and then fast when it goes straight down, right? It goes up slowly and then it goes straight down quickly. Just like the serve, when you want to maximize as much as you serve as possible, you start off slow. Your take back has to be slow, Right, until you, so you get to the point where this part, you're loaded, your hips is out, your feet are together, your left hand's up, your arms are already up 90 degrees, and then when you're about to release, that's where you want to explode, right? The contact of where you hit your serve is key as well, right? You don't want to hit your serve on the way down. The reason why you don't want to hit your serve on the way down is, when gravity comes down, the ball will come down faster, therefore your strike zone, well, if we come from here, straight down here, and that serve will end up going to the net. Right? The lower it is, the harder it will make my ball to go over that net. And you don't want to swing too fast, right? Not too early, because you're going to end up lifting the ball. So when you see the we hit that sweet point, the sweet point is what I call when that ball just stays up for a second, that pause, it just stays there. Right? That's where you actually hit the ball and explode as fast as you can. Right? When I wait, I wait, wait, wait. When I, explode, when I see that point, where it just pauses just for a second, and before it just goes straight down, I'm making my contact, my whole hip, 
and my contact and my rotation of that racket. It goes in front, goes to the top, in front, I'm reaching, reaching, and I'm snapping all the way through. Make sure you finish across your body. Never in front. Right? If you finish in front, it's going to hit your shins. Trust me, they are very painful. You hit so make sure you finish your serve across the body. So Jake, I hope that helped. Um, Coach Andrew is a, a great teacher. Uh, he played four years at the University of Santa Clara Division I school, um, all four years. And now he's the assistant coach over at USF. So um, his serve is beautiful, uh, very powerful, very easy. Um, I hope that helped your serve. And I hope that gave you a couple of tips as to you know, gripping it correctly, getting the, the legs and the hips and the shoulders in the right spot. Um, serve is the, the hardest thing. Like I tell everybody, whenever somebody gets a new racket or just start tennis, I mean, a serve takes the longest to get because everybody hits forehands, everybody hits backhands, right? You actually have to play a match or practice yourself in order to get that serve right. When I was beginning, when I was starting, it took me a year to figure out my serve. Uh, I did exactly what Jake did. I had the frying pan grip. Um, I came around way too fast, right? All I wanted to do was just kill the ball as hard as I can. Um, but until I figured out the grip had to be right, the shoulders had to be right, the legs had to be right, was when I you know, started getting a, a lot more consistent with that serve. So, Jake, I hope that helped. And everybody else out there, I hope that helped your serve. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.